Hi, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Uh, if you're new, just joining in, uh, welcome. We are currently in the middle of a uh, build series on a uh, 427 Dart LS twin turbo build, um, Project Orange Blaze. Uh, today, we are going to be covering uh, crank balancing. Uh, we've already done all the block machine work, blocks ready, final clean, um, in the assembly area. Uh, once we get the crank balanced, we can then get it clean then start checking our bearing clearance and start assembling the short block. Dart billet crank uh, for this build. It is a uh, four inch stroke. It's a center counterweighted crank. Um, so the difference there, this is a uh, typical aftermarket LS crankshaft uh, for mild performance. Um, it does not have counterweights here around the center thrust bearing. Uh, the center counterweight uh, add a little more stability at higher RPMs. Um, don't have to worry about twist as much. Um, it's just overall more stable. Um, with these dart billet cranks, they do not come with a reluctor wheel. So we have to supply our own. Um, we are choosing to use a uh, Cali's billet 24X reluctor wheel. So it's just one piece. Where a standard 24X wheel is two pieces that are kind of riveted together. Um, the reason behind the one piece, um, it's going to stay together. Uh, you don't have to worry about it coming apart. There's less warpage. Um, just gives a little bit better signal. Um, there's not as much run out in it. Um, so overall, it's just a lot better, especially when you're doing a high performance engine like this. Um, so I'll show you the process of how we put our reluctor wheels on there. Um, and we'll get going. All right, so we got our crank set up in the machine or in our stand, I should say. We do have this uh, handy dandy nifty little tool uh, for putting on our electric wheels. Um, we have our small dowel pin here to go into our electric wheel uh, dowel pin. And then we have another dowel pin here that indexes on the uh, dowel pin spot on the crank. And this is how we claw it, make sure we get the orientation correctly. Um, and typically all we do, we just take a torch um, go around the outside or the inside of this reluctor wheel and heat it up and expand and then we can drop it down over the crank and use our tool to make sure that it stays uh, properly uh, oriented. Alrighty, we got it on there. Uh, we're gonna let it sit and cool a little bit. That way it'll shrink back to the crank and we'll continue on with setting up the balancer. All right, so I'm gonna walk you through how we set up our balancer um, and getting all our weights and everything set up, set up in the machine. Uh, and it'll calculate the bob weight for us, tell us what we need to set our bob weights to. Um, so starting off, um, kind of kind of default screen right now. Um, we have different programs set up in here, along with all our customers. So we have a dedicated LS program that already has our radius, our specs between where the sensors are at and stuff like that. Um, we will do a new one and we can copy those specs in. Now we have all our specs still there on our new file name. <clears throat> so basically we can set this, or this B to B is the distance between the sensors. And I'll show you that in a minute when we get the crank set up on there. Um, it's basically where we're uh, supporting the front and rear main journals. Uh, we can then take and come down here. This is our bob weight card. Um, this is where we'll measure everything. I set it up in here. One of the things to pay attention to is our how many rods we have per throw. Uh, it's default set up at two. So if this was say like an inline four cylinder, obviously there's only one rod per journal. So we would change that to one. Um, but on this, obviously there's two rods per journal. We'll leave it at two. We can throw in a number. 
um, to account for the amount of oil that may be on the crank while it's spinning, um, we kind of stick with a standard of five because um, there's always going to be some weight on that crank. And it's hard to be able to measure exactly how much is there, but we do account for it um, in some sense. So we have our scale down here, leveled, set up, zeroed. Um, we'll take, we'll throw our piston on here. And then we can go into the spot on the software. And then we can transfer the number straight into the software for us. We don't have to manually type it in or anything like that. Uh, do like to enter obviously part numbers into description boxes just so we've got a record of it you never know when you may need it again or not have access to the build sheet uh, something along those lines this just gives us a little more um, kind of a backup Out putting a lot of part numbers in um, so as you can kind of see it kind of breaks it down nicely for us and the rotating and reciprocating weight and then it tells us what our bob weight is right there at the bottom which is 1952.8 grams so we can then take our bob weights over here which these are still set up from the last engine we done um, but we'll change these weights out so that this whole thing weighs 1952.8 we have all kinds of different size weights that we can add and of course little tiny ones that are half gram each just to be able to fine tune and get exactly what we need. how we get our crank set up so as you can see it's still in our stand and this is where we also drill for heavy metal um, but these are our two sensor uh, stands and there's sensors down in here they can measure any kind of imbalance um, they're they're pretty strong they can pretty much measure your heartbeat just by placing your finger on there um, so that they do measure pretty precisely and very very fine On these, we have a magnet on the end here. Um, this is basically a little rotary encoder. It tells basically the degree or rotation of the crankshaft. That way we can fine tune when we're drilling where exactly it needs to be and it tells us where the out of balance is. On some of these cranks, the bolt hole uh, is just a little too big for the magnet to work. So we've taken an old LS bolt, uh, factory bolt, 
cut it down, face off the end, make sure it's nice and true. Just so we've got something for our magnet to stick to that's nice and flat. Because <clears throat> we obviously want this magnet and arm and everything to the sensor be running as true as we can. Uh, that way it gets a bit of take out any kind of imbalance that, that could cause. <clears throat> and this also helps set our depth. So I'll bring in and show you that. Because I also want to make sure that our oil holes line up inside that groove there we don't want that running through because that'll cause a little bump and vibration um give us a bad reading so the other thing we do take out any imbalance of our magnet is we like to indicate it in make sure it's running true with the crank That's within two thou. Um, so that, that's plenty good enough. Really, inside five's plenty enough. Um, we now got our crank set up. We'll take a little bit of cleaner. Make sure we clean the center drum of the crank. Clean the shaft on our motor. And then we like to clean our belt. Just make sure there's no residue, cause any slippage. And then the belt just kind of goes over to a crank and goes down, sits on the spindle of the motor. And that, that's how we spin the crank. Um, we want to make sure there's no slippage, uh, just so that the motor is controlling it at the speed we want it to be at. Because uh, we do run these at, uh, we start out at 500 RPM, then as we get close, we'll go up to 750, um, just because there is a slight difference in reading, but 750 gets closer. And then we can make sure that it's fine tuned at that RPM. At this point, we'll rotate it around, get our number one rod journal facing up we can grab our number one bob weight grab a little wishbone uh, fork spacer whatever you want to call it um, but it just sits on here sits up against the cheek here and we push our bob weight against it and we can tighten our set screws up that way we set all our bob weights the exact same depth from the front face because if you just eyeball it this will cause a uh, difference in reading. Um, we've tested it, just kind of eyeballing them centered on the journal, and then we uh, respun it with putting these spacers in here, and there was about a 10 grams difference in the balance. Um, so it does make a difference. we got some good lubrication even though these are uh, material that very 
uh, lubers. We just want to make sure there's still some lubrication on there because um, you can never really have too much. Our safety guards on there just in case it was something crazy way out of balance uh, they just kind of catch it because it will want to jump out of the machine uh, so these safety guards just help prevent that from happening so I'll get y'all turned around and set up uh, and we'll go through spinning it up well we got everything the software set up we got our bob weights on here crank set up uh, next thing to do is gonna be to spin it up slowly um, about 100 rpm that way we can check our belt alignment make sure it's running true on the uh, mains or in the center of the main journal uh, and then we can spin it on up to 500 and we can see how it analyzes out see what it's saying so this one is our rear or the the rear or left side and then of course this the front or right side <clears throat> and this up here tells us how many grams were out what needs to be removed or added and then of course the arrow tells us where exactly so as we rotate the current you can kind of see how arrow up here moves so in the current setting up means we need to remove 65.9 grams from the rear at this spot and as you can see there's no counterweight here so we can't remove weight if there's no counterweight so if we have to remove weight from this side the other side we need weight added to do the same thing so this means we're going to end up having to add heavy metal to this crank we'll check the front and spin it around and it needs weight removed from there which again means if we were to go opposite means weight added puts it right here in the counterweight <clears throat> I will get all this uh, kind of calculated out uh, using the software because we can go in here for our heavy metal um, and put in where the edge of the counterweights are And that's basically telling us where we need to put our slug of heavy metal position wise on the counterweight. So right now our, number, our little dots are blinking at the top which means that we're 13.27 grams heavy or heavier than what it's asking for. So we can see that it's saying 7 8 diameter slug is 1.2 inches wide. Which that's not going to work because our LF counterweights are only 825 wide. <clears throat> so I'm going go in here and set 880. That'll get us close. Set it up. So now if we use a one inch slug, we're nine and a quarter grams heavy in the front and we're 15 in the rear. We're 14 in the rear once we got it back centered on zero so i'll get all this laid out on the crank and we will get set up for a heavy metal install all right so we got it set up in our uh, stand for drilling our heavy metal uh work through that process um also we'll have to drill rain and everything um so we still have kind of a press fit with our uh, heavy metal it does come slightly oversized so our rain does provide the right amount of press fit um, so we'll get started
So that's the first hole drilled and reamed. Uh, we'll get this kind of cleaned up. We'll deburr the edges a little bit and, uh, right before we put in uh, heavy metal. Well, that's pretty much it. We'll get this flipped over um, to the front side. So that way both holes are already in. We can then get our heavy metal. We can get it froze. Um, typically use liquid nitrogen. We can freeze that um, just so that it'll drop in a little easier. And we'll continue on. All right, we got both sides drilled for our heavy metal. Um, I'll go through the process of actually installing it. We've got our crank set up so that when we hammer through, it'll hit on this base plate, uh, not go too any further. So we got it set back up in the machine. Uh, we'll spin it up and we'll see how close we are now to heavy metal in it. within 10 grams in the rear and almost eight and a half in the front so the front wants just a little weight out right here which is good we typically shoot for with the heavy metal to be about five grams to 10 grams or so heavy uh, that way we can adjust if we need to um, in the rear let's get it rolled back around And it won't sway out pretty close to where the heavy metal is too. We'll get set up. We can adjust what diameter drill we want to use. Start with a half inch, see where that puts us. tolerance point 0.2 so we're one gram in the front 1.3 grams in the rear so at this point we are done balancing our crank 
Uh, we can tear it down, put all the bob weights back up. Um, we'll then take the crank over, we'll hit it on the polisher. Um, just because sometimes these bob weights, even though they are aluminum, you do get a little bit of scratch marks and stuff. So we'll hit it with a super fine polishing belt just to get rid of any of them. Um, just make sure there's nothing going to uh, start pulling bearing material off, eating up bearings, anything like that. <clears throat> so, at that point, we'll polish, get it clean, and then we'll start assembly. Um, thank y'all for tuning in. Make sure y'all comment, uh, subscribe, like, uh, share, turn on the little bell so you get notified when we upload a video. And I will see y'all next time.